All right, so we are back again. This is our video um, via the Scrubs team for the Lumbo Sacral Plexus. Uh, we'll try to keep this relatively straightforward and simple. Um, but again, Scrubs stands for the Student Collaborative Resources for Understanding and Brody Success. I am Ryan Dickerson, a uh, student in the Brody School of Medicine class of 2025. And with that, we will go ahead and get into this material. So before we dive too far in, I do want to just go over our mission statement. Scrubs is a student-driven initiative that aims to develop supplemental resources for current and future cohorts that will pass through Brody. Um, members of Scrubs participate in a variety of subcommittees working to create resources for students, by students, looking to offer the perspective of a student who has walked through the same shoes going through these courses and giving you resources that we wish we had had during our time in the course. The hope is that this will become a staple of the Brody student body, kind of exemplifying our collaborative community. Uh, community that we're trying to build here and if this is something that you're interested in and aligning with your goals uh, we're always looking for new members to help contribute to our ever-growing resources and last thing before we actually dive into the material let us talk about a disclaimer the fact that is that these resources are made by students and not by faculty so there is always the possibility of error and we do try to mitigate this with a team approach and go through multiple stages of vetting with our resources but if there's ever a contradiction to coursework uh, please go by your course documents additionally um, these are supplemental resources they in no way replace the instruction of the Brody, uh, Brody, Brody faculty and um, these resources also are not all-encompassing uh, we try to hit the big points that we can but as you can understand um, we are not able to cover everything that the course would in its own right and with that let's now get into the actual material that's being covered in this video so this video is focusing on the lumbosacral plexus. Um, the lumbosacral plexus is a plexus very similar to the brachial plexus that it, you learned in exam one that um, is composed of the ventral rami of spinal nerves L1 through S4. So important points here, this is the ventral rami of spinal nerves L1 through S4. So make sure you mark that down. Um, ventral rami, big point, and then spinal nerves L1 through S4. Now that is the entirety of the lumbosacral plexus. The lumbosacral plexus gives off a bunch of nerves that are going to do a bunch of things that we're going to talk about in a little bit more detail throughout this video. Um, but what I do want to point out is that for descriptive purposes, uh, what I'm going to do is actually break down the lumbosacral plexus into three components. I'm going to break it down into the lumbar plexus and then into the anterior components of the sacral plexus and then the posterior components of the sacral plexus. And then at, after that, I'll combine the anterior and posterior components of the sacral plexus, just to kind of put everything together um, so that we can kind of get a grasp of the overall sense of the lumbosacral plexus. So starting off with the lumbar plexus, um, when you're reading about these plexuses, there's no one way to go about this. Uh, so th there's, here's three different representations. So this is how uh, textbooks often represent the lumbar, or lumbar and sacral plexus. Um, I have a really hard time understanding how to follow these nerves and make sense of their functionality because um, it's just a mass of lines. Um, I, I'm a very visual learner. I do a lot of drawings. Um, this is my drawing for the lumbar plexus. I'll show you a different way to do this in a little bit. Um, that has a little bit less detail later on. But how I'm going to go through talking about these is just using these tables to kind of give you the big main points of the components of each one of these plexuses. And then we'll go through the actual drawing um, at the end. So let's, when we're talking about the lumbar plexus, the lumbar plexus is composed of the ventral rami from L1 to L5. So that's important to know. L1 through L5, it actually, and I say L5, um, I do want to point out this component from L4 to L5 is the lumbosacral trunk, which isn't technically part of the lumbar plexus. Um, so let me reframe that the lumbar plexus really is only composed of L1 through L4. Um, so what I want to point out here is that there is an anterior division, which you see in this drawing over here in light yellow, and a posterior division um, over here. I have those color coded in the table as well. Off of the anterior division, coming off of L1, you have the ilio hypogastric and ilioinguinal nerves. So the ilioinguinal and iliohypogastric nerves come off, and then the iliohypogastric is going to supply the abdominal musculature and skin of the suprapubic region. Um, you've seen this in lab. These run through the layers in between the transverse, so it's abdominus muscles and the um, internal oblique. And then the ilioinguinal is going, this is the nerve that runs through the superficial uh, inguinal ring coming out with the spermatocord around ligament of the um, uterus and then uh, this is going to be supplying abdominal musculature again and also the skin of the upper medial thigh and the scrotum. Now 
Next, we're going to have coming off uh, component skinning of L1 and L2. You're going to have the genitofemoral nerve, which branches into the genital and the femoral branch. The genital branch is going to supply the cremaster muscle and the scrotum. And then the femoral branch is going to supply the skin or the femoral triangle, which is a big point. Um, so this is the nerve that would, a way that this is often tested is we'll talk about putting in um, vascular access for some kind of procedure that uses the femoral artery um, and then in doing so if you wanted to reduce the pain and you wanted to put in a nerve block the question would be what nerve has to be blocked in order to not feel pain in this region and it's going to be the genitofemoral nerve okay now lastly off of the anterior division we have the obturator nerve this has the most of the components of the lumbar plexus l2 through l4 um, and then it's coming right here obturator is going to have an anterior and posterior division which you'll we'll talk more about when you get into the actual um, compartments of the leg but this is going to do the majority of the adductor compartment of the thigh so this video doesn't go into as much detail as to what each nerve innervates specifically we're kind of thinking on broad terms think about regions and then as you get further in to the um, to this unit you'll go more specific into understanding what each one of these nerves does specifically now going to the posterior region there's two nerves that we need to come out no coming off there's the lateral femoral cutaneous and the femoral nerve the femoral nerve has the same spinal segments as the obturator the only difference is that it is the anterior versus posterior division and then the lateral cutaneous femoral has spinal segments L2 through L3. So uh, the lateral femoral cutaneous is going to do the skin of the lateral thigh and buttocks. Um, this is actually a nerve that is often compressed under the inguinal ligament. So it's coming off right in this region. And it goes underneath that inguinal ligament. And it can often be compressed during pregnancy. When the abdomen um, kind of extends, overextends, and pushes down on that li um, ligament, compressing that nerve and so people can get numbness in this region and then the femoral nerve right we can see coming out right through here this is going to be doing the iliac as psoas major um, along with the muscles of the anterior thigh and there's multiple cutaneous branches that are provided as well now switching over to the sacral plexus the sacral plexus is going to be composed of the spinal segments from l4 all the way to s4 um, and then there is going to be an anterior and posterior division so we're going to start by talking about the components that come off the anterior division. We're going to start at the top and we're going to work our way down. The first is coming from L4 through S1. We have the nerve to the inferior gemellus and quadratus femoris. When you learn the musculature of the gluteal region, I recommend that you break these nerves down by region. And once you do so, things start to make a lot more sense in terms of spatial recognition. But in terms of rope memorization, inferior gemellus and quadratus femoris, spinal segments L4 through S1. Um, this is going to innervate the, the muscles of those names. Um, and then next we have the uh, nerve to the superior gemellus and obturator internus. This has spinal segments L5 through S2, and it's going to do the uh, superior gemellus and obturator internus muscles. Um, we do have a small branch that goes to the um, posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. I'll talk more about this um, a little bit later, but the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve has segments that come from the anterior and the posterior division. Um, so in total, it, the spinal segments are going to be slightly different, but the anterior component gives off spinal segments S2 through S3. The pudendal nerve, which is one of the main ones that you need to know coming off the anterior division of the sacral plexus, is going to be spinal segments S2 through S4. This is going to do your external sphincter, your urogenital triangle, and a whole lot more. Um, this is something that we've already touched on previously, but the pudendal nerve is a very important nerve to know. Uh, then lastly, coming off of the anterior um, component, you have the levator onion coccygeus muscle. This has spinal segments S3 through S4, and it's going to innervate the pelvic diaphragm. And then the um, really the last one I will point out, the main nerve, and this is going to be one of, so your sciatic nerve is made up of two nerves. It's made up of the tibial nerve and the common fibular nerve. Um, one comes off of the anterior division, one comes off the posterior division. The, uh, this specific nerve is the tibial nerve, and it's going to come off the posterior division. Um, this, or sorry, it's going to come off the anterior division. And the tibial nerve is made up of spinal segments L4 through S3, and it is going to supply most of the posterior thigh and all of the posterior leg and posterior foot. And when I say posterior foot, um, I'm talking about the plantar aspect of the foot. Okay, now moving into the posterior division. Um, the posterior division is has a little bit less going on, so it's a little bit easier to remember. Um, and what's nice about this is we're gonna start at the top with a superior gluteal nerve, and it has spinal segments L4 through S1. Then the nerve that comes out right below that is the inferior gluteal nerve 
which has L5 through S2. So it just kind of drops down a sp spinal segment. Um, now, I do want to point out the superior gluteal nerve does not do the glute max. The superior gluteal nerve does the glute me, glute men, and a tensor fascia lot of the thigh. And the inferior gluteal nerve does the gluteus maximus. Um, and then we keep going down. We have the uh, posterior cutaneous femoral. Remember, this is contributing to branches from the anterior division as well. So the overall posterior cutaneous femoral nerve has spinal segments S1 through S3. S1 and 2 are from the posterior division. S2 and 3 are from the uh, anterior division. Then we have a nerve to the piriformis, which is one of the muscles that is in the pelvis. Um, and then we have our common fibular nerve. So our common fibular nerve is a nerve that is going to go down and supply the lateral aspects of our leg um, and anterior aspects of our leg and foot. And that is, I kind of drew it over here, um, over here. That is L4 through S2. And it's going to do the short head, the biceps femoris, and uh, structures in the lower leg. And that will eventually break into um, a deep fibular and superficial fibular branch, which you'll learn about later. And looking at this image, I recognize now that this says tibial. This, this should not be tibial. This is definitely supposed to be the fibular nerve. Okay. So that was a really fast rundown of everything. And it just seems like a bunch of information that you have to write memorize. So one way that I work through this to make sure that I can remember and repeat this um, on test day is I have a drawing that I use. Um, that's kind of a consistent thing to do. So what you're going to start by doing is this is we're going to do the lumbar plexus first. So for the lumbar plexus, we we'll start by drawing a straight line and labeling our spinal segments L1, L2, L3, L4, L5. And anything that's drawn on this right side is going to represent our anterior division. Anything drawn over here on the left is going to represent our posterior division. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw three straight lines from L1, L2 to L3. Right, pretty symmetrical, easy to do. After that. I'm going to draw a line from L1 to L2, and then I'm going to draw two lines going to meet at L3. So, so far, we're just drawing three straight lines, then one, two, three, pretty quick. And then I'm going to take each one of those terminal branches and make a Y. And just like that, you've taken care of everything off of the anterior division. Now, for the posterior division, I'm going to start off by going from L2 to L3, making a joint point, and then a line that comes straight off of that. From there, I'm going to bring a component after this, these two have come together, and join it with L4, and then continue that on down. Okay, And then the last thing, um, I'm going to bring L4 and L5 together. So you might say, well, Ron, this is, this is just a bunch of lines. It is just a bunch of lines, um, but it's something that I can do repeatedly, and now we can actually go through and label these. So off of L1, L1 comes out. And it's going to give off two nerves. If you recall back, that is your iliohypogastric and your ilioinguinal. Both have spinal segments L1. If I come down to this next unit, we have coming off of L2, getting a contribution from L1, coming through. This is going to be our genitofemoral nerve, which has segments that correspond to the genital nerve and then the femoral nerve as it will uh, bifurcate further down. I come down here, getting spinal segments from S, uh, L2, L3, and L4. This is going to be my obturator which has an anterior and posterior division. Um, and then if I'm looking posteriorly, we can see that L2 and L3 come together. This is my lateral cutaneous femoral nerve. And then I take spinal segments from L2 all the way through L4 to form my femoral nerve. And then lastly, this section that, again, isn't technically part of the lumbar plexus, uh, this is our lumbosacral trunk. All right, so this is a quick way um, you can draw this repeatedly get really good at it, kind of like you did the brachial plexus, and then you'll always be able to backtrack the spinal segments for all of the nerves that you need to know. Okay, that was our um, lumbar plexus. Well, how about our sacral plexus? And we can do this, I know um, previously I've described it as an anterior and posterior division separately, but here is going to be a drawing that puts it all together. So again, everything on this side is anterior, everything on this side is posterior. Let's start by drawing two straight lines. We're going to draw a line through L4 and through S2. Okay, from there, I'm going to do something very symmetrical. Everything's going to look the same on both sides. From L5 to S1, we have a point, and then it comes out a little bit further before I draw it bifurcating to go to those lines that I drew initially. Okay, so this is a pretty cool um, looking structure, but again, it was very symmetrical. I do it once, and I just everything I do on one side, I do on the other side. So that is the base. From there, I'm going to need to draw two more straight lines. Right, on S3 and S4. So this is coming off the anterior division. 
So let's figure out the rest of this anterior division before we go to the posterior division. What I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a lines going from S2 and S4 to S3. And then from there, I'm going to cross over from S3 to S4, and I'm going to draw a line that kind of comes halfway into this um, component from S2. And then I'm just going to continue that out. So that takes us through our anterior division drawing. Now to continue for the posterior, really straightforward. All I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line that comes straight from S1 through this S2 component. Right here, I draw this little contribution going to it, and I'm going to draw it bifurcating into a Y at the end. And like that, I've drawn the basic structure that I need to understand the anterior and posterior divisions of the sacral plexus. So again, this means nothing to me unless I can go through and identify what it is that we've drawn. So let's start with our anterior division um, from L4 coming out. This is now getting components from L5 and S1 as well. So this means that this is in total L4 through S1. That is going to be our uh, quadratus femoris and inferior gemellus. Then down here, we have L5 through S2. This is obturator internus and superior gemellus. And what do you know? Everything looks symmetrical over here on the other side. You have the superior gluteal nerve and the inferior gluteal nerve that pair um, with different nerves on the anterior side. So superior gluteal has spinal segments L4 through S1, same as the nerve to quadratus femoris and inferior gemellus. The inferior gluteal nerve has spinal segments L5 through S2, same as the obturator internus and superior gemellus. Right, so I really like this diagram because it shows me um, how I compare things and really just simplify what I'm learning. Now, um, identifying the other components of the anterior division, we have our pudendal nerve, which remember is getting S2 through S4, so that's this main one coming across, so that's our pudendal nerve. Then right here, uh, this is my way of showing the posterior cutaneous femoral is getting segments from S2 and S3 coming up for posterior cutaneous femoral. And lastly, the nerve to the levator ani and coccygeus muscle, um, that is getting spinal segments from L4 coming across, as well as a segment coming from S3. So the overall nerve to the levator ani and coccygeus muscle is S3 through S4. Now in our posterior division, pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to get the nerve to the piriformis and the uh, posterior component to the posterior cutaneous femoral. And remember, this is these both are going to be S1 through S2. So you can see that here, the S1 coming down, and then the component from S2. Now, the two biggest nerves that you need to know are the two that, um, that join to form the sciatic nerve, and that is your confibular and your tibial nerve. So I draw those as just boxes. Um, because I know the anterior division is going to have your um, tibial nerve, that is L4 through S3. And then I have the posterior division, which is giving your common fibular nerve, which is L4 through S2. So um, one way to think about this, if you remember the tibial comes off the anterior division, you can see the anterior division has more stuff kind of associated with it. So it should get one extra spinal segment. Um, and then in a later video, we'll talk about how to actually follow these nerves that form your sciatic nerve down into the uh, the leg and figure out where they what those are innervating specifically. Okay, so this was a broad overview, but I do want to say that this is a starting point to start to build a study method for this entire unit. And I'm going to show you how I would do that on this next slide. So this is a filled out form of uh, a drawing. I would never do this um, on a test. But as I'm studying, this is how I structure my study guide for this unit. I go through and draw the sacral plexus, and I would do the lumbar plexus as well. And then for every nerve, I want to identify the spinal segments that correspond with each nerve. I want to identify the muscles that are innervated by the nerve, the origin, insertion, and action of each one of those muscles. Um, and this will start to build a general understanding of the schematics that are, are important to know. Um, the regions that each nerve innervates, and this is unfortunately not something that you'll be able to do um, if you're following this video um, in the same order as the course, just because you haven't had a chance to view the lower limbs yet. But once you do, this is a really great point to come back to and do a similar diagram yourself. It doesn't have to look like this, but being able to identify all of the nerves, all the muscles that are innervated by said nerves, the spinal segments, the origins, actions, and insertions of the muscles that are located in the general region of the body, such as the anterior compartment of the leg, the posterior compartment of the leg, the anterior thigh, posterior thigh, that kind of thing. Um, it would be really helpful in limiting the amount of individual information you need to know, and you can instead think on the broad scheme of things, um, which will, will help facilitate your learning and help facilitate those clinical correlation questions. Okay, and with that, that'll bring us to the end of this video.